The picker selects from the options available, leading us into false dichotomies created by the options we see in front of us. But a chooser is thoughtful enough to conclude that perhaps none of the available alternatives are satisfactory and that if he or she wants the right alternative, he or she may have to create it. We can't use just one yardstick to measure a successful life. So you need to measure quantity and quality. The study came up with four metrics that matter most. 1. Happiness. Having feelings of pleasure or contentment in and about your life. 2. Achievement. Achieving accomplishments that compare favorably against similar goals others have strived for. 3. Significance. Having a positive impact on people you care about. 4. Legacy. Establishing your values or accomplishments in ways that help others find future success. You want to be contributing to the four needs on a regular basis. If you ignore any of them, you're headed for a collapsing strategy. A good starting point is asking yourself, what's good enough? Saying only the best does not work in a world where options and competition are limitless. Limitless freedom is alternately paralyzing and overwhelming. Plus, the only place we get good limits these days is when we determine them ourselves based on our values. It all comes down to the question, what do I want? If you don't decide, the world will decide for you. Good enough is almost always good enough. Okay, so you need to think about the big four and reach good enough in each. You want to be a chooser, not a picker. You want to conquer the world, but you also want to get home by 6 p.m. and not work weekends. That's why you need a plan. Your war is first and last with yourself, but that's a battle you can definitely win with the right plan. When we think about obstacles ahead of time and consider how to overcome them, we feel in control. That's the secret to really getting things done. When we think we can make a difference, we're more likely to engage. It's not actually being in control that, ca that causes all these changes. It's just the feeling of control. Even if we have the illusion that we are in control, our cognitive functions are preserved. Obey the spirit of the law, even if you can't follow the letter. Simply put, try. Reassuring yourself feels nice, but you're here to improve your life. Focus on the stuff in the plan that you don't do. Remember, emphasizing the negative can feel crummy, but it's the path to improvement. That's what the experts do. Write down where each hour goes as it happens. Don't rely on your fallible memory. Do this for a week. Where are your activities taking you? Is it where you want to go? Remember, you cannot maximize two things that are both dependent on the same resource time. If you really want a better work-life balance, don't make assumptions. Sit down with your boss and actually discuss it. You need to be realistic about what you can get done in the time you have. The only way to do that is to schedule things on a calendar instead of making an endless list. You need boundaries if you want work-life balance. Also, at least an hour a day, preferably in the morning, needs to be protected time. This is an hour every day when you get real work done without interruption. Approach this concept as if it were a religious ritual. What was fascinating was that increasing people's free time had no effect on their happiness, but scheduling that time in advance made all the difference. A good way to deal with busy work is in batches. If something doesn't have priority and there's just no time for it, you need to say no. By rearranging your workspace so, sem so temptations aren't visible, you can trick yourself into making better choices. Research shows that writing down the things you need to take care of tomorrow can settle your brain and help you relax. Research shows that weekends are great because it's the extra time with people you care about. Stephen J. Ross said, it's by daydreaming and then doing something about those dreams that we can achieve success. In fact, it's the only way we can. We get hung up on the heights of success we see in the media and forget that it's our personal definition of success that matters. What's the most important thing to remember when it comes to success? One word, 
alignment. Success is not the result of any single quality. It's about alignment between who you are and where you choose to be. The right skill in the right role. A good person surrounded by other good people. A story that connects you with the world in a way that keeps you going. A network that helps you and a job that leverages your natural introversion or extroversion. A level of confidence that keeps you going while learning and forgiving yourself for the inevitable failures. How do you find alignment? As the oracle at Delphi said so long ago, know thyself. Then align those qualities with the world around you. Pick the right pond. Find a job that leverages your intensifiers. What's the most important type of alignment? Being connected to a group of friends and loved ones who help you become the person you want to be. The only thing that really matters in life are your relationships to other people. Take the time to figure out what you are and find the right body of water for you.